Hi guys, welcome to the sixth part of the tutorial series on WebTemp Pro for Web App. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create context elements dynamically, context attributes, and uh, how do we bind those uh, context attributes that we create dynamically to the UI elements. And uh, we will also generate those UI elements dynamically. So the context element creation, UI element generation, even the binding, everything will do uh, at runtime. So uh, I've created an example component with uh, the name example underscore 08. And it has a view and a window. Um, and the view layout has one label, uh, one input field and but one button. It's uh, similar to you know what I had in my uh, previous tutorial. So and uh, apart from those three I have uh, something called group. right? Um, so I'm planning to include those dynamically generated UI elements under this group. It, instead of you know uh, doing that, uh, inserting them under root UI element, I'm going to do that and inside uh, the group UI element. Okay. Um, so we'll just look at the demo first and then uh, go through the code later. Okay. Okay. So this is the application. Um, so I can enter a number here let's say 4 and I click it here and then we have you know 4 labels and 4 input elements right. if I decrease the number oh, sorry uh, if I decrease the number so you know the, the it, it's similar to the, the button tutorial that I've done right. it, it has uh, it creates whatever the number you enter here it creates so many UI elements and also there is an action handler related to the input elements. If I place the cursor on any of the input fields and press enter, it will trigger an action handler which has which displays a message uh, saying you know which input field you place the cursor. So I placed in the input to the, the second uh, input el input uh, UI element. If I place it in the third and press enter, it will say input three. Okay. So that is the you know the demo let's see the code now okay uh, as i said in my previous tutorial um, you know if you want to do any dynamic ui generation what you need to first to do is understand how do we create uh, those ui elements at design time so if you want to create a label and input field what you do you just go here and then uh, you know insert element and then say label All right let's say label 1 and then label and then I want to create an input U element so it's input 1 and then input field okay and then for the label you need to so let's see what are the properties that we need to specify for the label and the input field so for the label, you know, you need to specify an ID that is common to every UI element. So we have an ID and there's something called label for. So this, so this label is for, you know, which input input field. So that you need to specify here. So I need to select input one and then you have to enter the text here. Right. So there are three things. One is the label ID. One is uh, label for and the actual text that we want to display for label so so then coming to input 1 there's an ID and also there is a the binding so we need to bind uh, bind the value property to one of the context attributes right and then there's an optional thing uh, you can leave it blank or you can create an event for on enter like for the button we have on click event so for the input field uh, you have something on enter so here also there are three things that we can uh, the three properties that we can set so what we what we're going to do in modify method is exactly the same thing okay now we need to first create the context elements in order to create the input fields uh, on the screen right so that code I've written in action handler of this click button. If we go 
Okay, first let's you know delete these things. This is the action handler for the click button. Um, I'm reading the, the the input field where I'm entering the number of UI elements that uh, I want to generate. This one, right? Again, it's similar to what I did in my last tutorial. So I'm going to I'm not going to you know go through it in detail. Um, I'm storing that value in some global variable, global attribute. And then here is the actual code uh, to generate the context attributes. So first, wd context is you know is is a attribute, is a system generated attribute which refers to the context node. So I'm going to get the reference of that, and then use uh, the, the interface has so many methods. Uh, one of them is get attributes. So it will read all the attributes that are present uh, under that context node. And then I'm going to do a, a do loop. See if I enter four in the input field, I'm going to do this for four times. Every time I will in increment a counter and then store it in a string. And then uh, I'm I'm building basically the name of the attributes. Right? For instance, here uh, the name of the attribute is you know number of input fields. Right? So if I want to create you know, for in uh, context attributes that I'm going to bind to input elements, I have to give some name to the attribute. So that name I am generating based on uh, the counter. So for the first time it will be input one. For the second time it will be input two. Third time input three, like that. Um, so here what I'm doing is if so here I'm getting all the attributes that are already created under the context. So I'm just checking if this attribute, the input one for instance, is already created or not. If it is already created, then I'm going to continue, which means I'm not going to create it again. So if it is not created, then I'll come here and then call this add attribute method and pass in the attribute uh, name and the attribute type. So this will create an attribute under the context node. So this is how we generate the attributes at dynamic. Uh, at runtime, you can also generate nodes. If you, if you go to the you know that interface, this interface, this is the interface that uh, you can have something called add attribute that we're using to add an attribute. You have something called add new child node, which will add uh, the node. Okay, and then this is the get attributes, which will uh, you know get you all the attributes present under context context node get child nodes uh, you know there are a lot of methods very useful methods uh, that are available under this interface okay so these are we create the context attributes now we have the context attributes created so you know we can now create the actual ui elements under the uh, root ui element oh, sorry uh, under the group ui element Okay, so the code here is, uh, if you remember in the previous tutorial, here I'm using root UI uh, container element here. But here I'm using group because uh, that's where I'm going to add my UI elements. So we have a get element method to get the reference of the group. And then again, um, what I'm doing here is uh, you know, every time I, every time my system comes to this method, I'm going to just remove all the UI elements that were previously created under group and I'll create uh, recreate everything from the scratch. Okay. So if you don't do that what happens uh, you know if you click 3 here and then if you make it 4 system will uh, you know recreate input 1 input 2 again but then uh, input 1 already exists in the view so it will dump. So before you know in the dynamic UI programming you have to keep in mind that before you create any UI elements, you first need to check whether it was already created. If it was already created, then remove it and then recreate again. Okay. 
so that's what I'm doing I'm just removing it uh, remove all the children's under group and then I'm uh, you know doing a do loop again the similar thing what we did in the last tutorial I'm including the counter and then here uh, instead of in you know apart from input fields I'm also creating labels so label need a text and it needs an ID right and this is for sorry this is for input field so for input field also we need an ID and we need a text okay now I'm, uh, I'm creating an input field again um, for the but for the button we have something called CLWD button so for the input field we have CLWD input field and it has a static method called new input field and the import parameters we need to pass the ID uh, this is basically uh, you know this refers to the context attribute that we have created okay and then this refers to the on action on enter action handler action basically and then for the label I'm creating I'm using a CLWD label class which has a static method new label and it we're passing an ID of the label and then we're saying to which input field that label belongs to okay so this will input field ID and then the text okay so we have created uh, a label and the input field now we need to add the layout data as well so if I see, if you see here um, I've selected row layout for the group okay so when you add uh, you know if you go back to my uh, a tutorial on layouts you can see uh, if you have a row layout then the then you can arrange the UI elements under that container uh, in, 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 in separate rows right so what I'm doing here is I want to you know arrange the label on the input field one after the other in, in different rows so what I'm doing there is a class for row head data so I'm setting the row head data for label and then I'm setting row data for the input field so these two things will appear in one line side by side one row and the next time when uh, when the loop you know executes next time the second label will appear in the second row because we're setting the layout data as a row head data okay and then finally I'm just adding that uh, label and input field to the container so that will create uh, the label and input field in separate rows okay um, okay coming to the action handler yeah I mean it's a uh, same thing what we did for buttons so we have an action here which is input field underscore act and there is a corresponding event handler and that event handler has the code for displaying the message so here again I'm just reading the ID of the input field so that I know you know where do where do I um, where did I place the cursor when I pressed when I press enter okay so that's all uh, okay so that's all for this tutorial um, I will see you guys in the next tutorial thanks for watching bye bye